Hello everyone, GWF1 here, second time I'm trying to record this, and uh, welcome to um, something a little bit different today. Uh, today I'm going to give you a little bit of a, well it's titled behind the scenes, but it's more of a how things are done in GP4OC. Now, first of all, I hope you've been, you've been enjoying the, uh, the content so far for the 5th anniversary. Obviously on Monday we had the top 5 things you forgot about GP4OC, and then... Uh, just recently, as I'm recording this, because I'm recording this on Tuesday night, we had the 2013 Bahrain Grand Prix highlights. Uh, there's probably some of you out there who are wondering why I've chosen those f specific three races for um, for the anniversary: the 2013 Bahrain GP, the 2013 Japanese Grand Prix, and the 2006 Brazilian Grand Prix. Well, it's because those races never actually had highlights made for them. So I thought, you know, fifth anniversary would make a lot of sense to actually finally give them highlights. So, um, yes, yeah, so this is going to be unscripted, of course, no script involved, like with the team news or whatever. Uh, this is completely unscripted. This is just me talking to you in a microphone, just telling you how things work, basically. So I've already recorded this once, but uh, that kind of messed up. So I'm trying again this time with, um, with a software I'm going to be, be showing you in a little bit. So uh, without further ado... Uh, let's get rolling. So we're going to look at five softwares that we mainly use, uh, five important softwares. And uh, yeah, so we'll start off with OBS, uh, which stands for Open Broadcast, uh, s s uh, <laughs> Open Broadcast System. You can tell that system uh, software. You can definitely tell that this is unscripted because I've messed up there. But um, yeah, that's fine. Uh, but as you can see, this is what uh, me... Yiri and Flo use to stream the races to YouTube or qualifying or practice, whatever. Um, this is what we use. Now, there are different versions of OBS, I should point out as well. I think Yiri has a different version to the one I'm showing, and I believe Flo has as well. Um, but this is the one I use for uh, myself personally. Now, I don't stream uh, on the Macintosh anymore, which is where I'm filming this from. Uh, I stream now on my gaming laptop because, as you may or may not know, uh, I used to... Uh, capture everything that was on my gaming laptop onto uh, onto this Mac via a capture card, the Ava Media Live Gamer Portable. However, since I put a Mac uh, operating system update on it, uh, it doesn't work anymore. So uh, I've had to resort to going to my gaming laptop. So I've moved ev all the OBS on there and uh, it seems to be working okay at the moment. So, uh, yeah, and obviously I'm using OBS at the moment to record this uh, video. I did originally record it on another uh, software, which I've just realised is just closed. So I'll, I'll open that up again when uh, we get to that. But, uh, yeah, um, so this is OBS. This is where we do for the streaming. So there's a number. Of, there's two things we're going to look at mainly on here. It's the, the main part of it, the, the home page, as you were, and, of course, the settings tab. So, um, anyway, so... You've got scenes over here. Now, this is where you can have different scenes going on, different layouts, etc. I used to have two scenes when I used to host IFMC. I had one which said Grand Prix 3 and one for Grand Prix 4 when I did Formula E. But, of course, I don't host IFMC anymore. That series has been defunct. So, it's just uh, GP4 for me. That's why it's just Grand Prix 4 here. But I could add another scene if I wanted to for the purpose and add whatever. But I'm not going to do that. Uh, then you've got sources over here. Now you can add a number of things onto here. We can have images on here. Now images are a very important one. Yui usually uses that to put the schedule up at the beginning of the streams. But all three of us, me, Flo and Yui, use it as well. To uh, Well, I also use the image uh, uh, option as well. But we also use it for champion graphics as well. So if it gets to a point where somebody's on the verge of winning a championship that weekend or... A team is on the verge of winning it. We can use this option to uh, to show off a graphic, basically, and then uh, we can then, whenever he or she does end up winning the championship, we can basically do well. I'll do it here, really, with this display capture, with this little icon here, this little um, eye icon. We can um, we can then basically somebody wins a championship. That's obviously invisible. Someone wins a championship. Press that, comes up. Same with an image, really. Now. The one important thing we also use is window capture. This is what we use to capture the uh, in-game gameplay for Grand Prix 4. Uh, I, when I was streaming on my Mac, used to use display capture for this. Uh, but ever since I've moved to the gaming laptop, I use the Windows ca window capture. Now, now, the reason why I use it on display capture is because I found that window capture, for RV Central at least, didn't actually work very well. So I stuck with display capture for that reason. 
And um, so, yeah, that was that, really. We've got a number of things here. We've got some uh, audio here as well. Desktop audio is obviously, well, desktop audio. And the mic is what you're listening to. Hello. Uh, <laughs> then you've got a transition, a scene transition. Now, you can put some fancy stuff on here. You can have a cut transition for whenever you're switching over to a scene, basically. Or you can have a fade transition. Um, I think there's more you can do on here, but I've not really touched upon it. Over here is where you can stream. Uh, I'm not going to press that, otherwise it will go live to the world, and I'm not going to do that. That's where you press to uh, to stream, as, as long as you've got all your settings in place from YouTube. This is where you can record a video, which is what I'm doing now. Studio mode, I'm not going to press that, it just makes the thing bigger and just does other things. Settings, we'll get onto that in a minute, and then exit you can close, but you can normally just close with this button over here. Now we're going to get onto the settings. Now, I'm not going to show you every setting, because there's one area which is a bit more... Uh, personal and that's the stream tab so I'm not going to click on that because that's where all the details are um, including the stream key which I'm not going to bother pressing because otherwise it might leak it might not but I'm not going to risk it general is just some stuff it just gives you whatever theme you want I've obviously got it on a dark theme but you can have it on any theme you want whatever your preference is we'll go to output now the normal bit rate which is what me and flow have it on normally is 2000 kbpp yeah kpp kbps it's a bit of a tongue twister that is uh 2000 kbps uh which i believe stands for kilobytes i presume i know computers so much that there's some things i don't know so somebody can correct me in the comment section if you want but uh yeah uh we have an encoder which only has one thing uh, audio bitrate, now that might seem low and it might be different on the gaming laptop, but I remember using this for when I was on this Macintosh, but trust me it isn't, it's, it's loud enough as it is. Uh, then you've got encode preset, now this is what basically ensures that there's not too much blurriness on the screen really. So, we all have it set, I don't know if Yuri has it on a faster setting given that his PC is more powerful than mine and flows, but we normally keep it at about super fast. On my... That's what I had on my Mac, but ever since I moved to the gaming one, I've had it on ultra fast just due to the CPU deciding it wanted to do encoding problems during the stream. So I've had it at ultra fast, which has made it a bit blurry at times, but I found it's not too bad. As long as you can see it, that's that's all okay for me. Uh, audio, we can do some stuff on here. This is where you can set up all your audio stuff. Now, when I was streaming on the Mac, I had to use a third-party source for the audio because for some reason, OBS... Uh, for some reason, doesn't seem to uh, like the Mac built-in desktop, or the Mac built-in desktop doesn't like OBS. So I've had to use the first party to time to basically bypass it. So I use Soundflower for that, but unfortunately, Soundflower doesn't work for that anymore uh, for desktop audio. We also have a mic one as well, which is what I'm using now, which is the Blue Snowball. Um, you same company that makes the Blue Yeti, uh, but I've got the Snowball in white. For anybody wondering, I've had this microphone now for. Ooh, I want to say about five years now, so yeah, it's been serving me well so far. It's not let me down once. I'm happy to have this microphone, to be honest. Then you've got video. Uh, now, obviously, I can't do anything at the moment, as you can see, because obviously I'm recording a video, but um, we can do several things on here as well. Uh, this is where we can do the resolution for base and output. Uh, now, me and Yui have it at 1280 by 720 which gives us 70, 720p quality. Uh, but Flo has it in 920 by 1080 because he started doing streams in 1080p recently. Um, in Over here, uh, downscale filters. We don't really touch that, to be honest. Over here is where you sort out your frames per second or FPS. Uh, Flo and Yui have it at 60 frames per second. I keep it at 30 frames per second for obvious reasons. But uh, you can obviously have it at 60 frames or 30 frames, depending on how you feel, basically. And then you come to hotkeys. Now, I used to use hotkeys when I was streaming on the Mac. Uh, mainly, for example, whenever there was a chance a champion was going to get crowned in either Formula E or my brief time I posted in the top class, uh, I would use hotkeys to try and show off the champion grab it for whenever a driver or a team won the championship. I would usually just press a button on the keyboard, set it on here, and uh, that's that really because what would happen is I'd have the stream running in the background and then I'd have RV Central in full screen to show off the gameplay in full screen basically and then whenever a champion was crowned whether that be a driver or a team I press a button which I have uh, I've set uh, from the hotkeys um, area of this and uh, and it basically showed it off so yeah that's how that worked that's all really that needs to be said about uh, OBS. So another software I'm going to show you is a one I've been using recently, mainly for uh, for for some people's commentary, i.e. Robert Ionescu's. It's uh, 
QuickTime Player. Uh, now, you may think that QuickTime Player, if you have it on Windows or even Mac, you may realise, I thought that was a, a video uh, thing that you could play videos on. Well, it is, but it can also be used for something else. You can also use it to record your screen. Uh, and this is what I use to record uh, Robert Ionescu's commentary. Because as you may have noticed with the uh, Bahrain 2013 highlights, or even the last team news of the season when Rob was doing the GP2 announcements, um, he might have had a few lags here and there. That's because I was recording his audio from his side, as Rob unfortunately doesn't have any audio software to his disposal. So um, I had to go on a Discord call with him to uh, to get the audio from him, basically record a video, and then extract the audio from that on Premiere Pro. So that's how that worked, really. So this is what I use, basically, QuickTime Player. Uh, I also used it as well for when uh, we did Rick Yan's retirement announcement for the final team news of the season. So... Because he doesn't have the... Well, I believe he does have audio software. But it, it was a bit easier for me to do it. Uh, for him, for me to record his audio. So that um, it made it a bit easier. So that I could get the video edited, basically. Is what I'm trying to say quickly, quickly enough, basically. So that's the, one of the software I use. I'm going to click off that now. Because I don't need to uh, look at it. I'm not uh, recording anybody's audio today. Um, now we get onto the three other softwares. Now... This is where the magic happens, basically, uh, for video editing, graphics, and recording audio for the team news, basically. Um, or even what the recent video I did, which was the top five things you forgot about, and what I'll be using for the top ten uh, best GP4C races voted by you, of course, which closes, uh, ironically, later on tonight at 11.59pm BST, so get voting in the uh, five-year announcement uh, trailer uh, underneath the pinned comment, that's for sure. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's minimise uh, OBS for now. That can still record in the background very nicely. Now the free softwares I use, they're all Adobe products. Uh, we have Adobe Premiere Pro, which is what I use to edit the videos, the highlights, team news, etc., etc. Photoshop is what I use to edit graphics, and the recent one I've just acquired, Adobe Audition, is what I use to record my voice for the team news or anything else, basically. So here is Audition. There's not really much to to look at. You basically press a button, and over here it gives you a new uh, audio file. And uh, so let me just give you an example. Just call it test. There you go. It's already recording in the background. Look, it's uh, recording my voice. As you can see, I can go high or I could go low. Uh, basically that. So in fact, I'm just going to stop recording there. And uh, in fact, I'm just going to uh, close that because I don't need it. Uh, just basically an example for you. So not really much to go off here, really, with the... Uh, with, uh, audition really um then we get to photoshop which is where all the graphics are done now over here you've got a thumbnail which is the thumbnail that was used for the uh, 2017 finale highlights uh as you can see brazilian grand prix is on it now we can edit a number of things it's got a lot of layers we've got the logo over here we've got the uh, banner over here which uh, is in other colors for the uh, feeder series because this is the same template that's used for the schedule uh, for the stream schedules we have the flags over here in the bottom right hand corner and then in the background we have a uh, an image which is in a 50% fill basically making it a bit invisible but not too invisible basically it's got half of its visibility basically uh, we can also use the opacity tool for that but I tend to use the fill tool for that and uh, basically it's just a screenshot from the opening uh, few minutes of three seconds of the uh, of a race really this is what I use for the thumbnails I just basically do that really just take a screenshot of that so that's the, uh, the the thumbnail. We also have some champion graphics here. We have uh, a Will Nella champion graphic because obviously he won the title in uh, in in Brazil, which uh, is obviously a very popular one. That's for sure, a very popular champion in Will Nella. We also have a constructor one. Now that says Ferrari, but obviously of course Mercedes won the constructors. Now the reason why it says Ferrari is because I had to make. Uh, well, two drivers' champion graphics for Yiri because obviously Jay had a chance of winning it, of course. And I also made two had to make two constructors' championship graphics because Ferrari also had a ch chance of snatching the constructors off Mercedes, which of course didn't happen because of course Mercedes ended up winning their third constructors' title, and of course Will Neller ended up winning the drivers' title. But that's where we uh, do the champion graphics. Over here we've got the results graphics, uh, which is obviously used in the highlights. Uh, edit the laps uh, over here via the text tool. We've got uh, positions. Uh, team icon, well, color icons for the teams, drivers' names, uh, FL down here, fastest lap down here as well, flags, teams, uh, team logo, the gaps, and including the 
a calculated time for the race winner. And then over here, if anybody gets a penalty, we use these arrows. And then, of course, put the time penalty for that particular driver in red uh, with how many, how many seconds worth of penalties they actually had. Uh, there's obviously another one over here, look, uh, which is for the second graphic, but it's basically just uh, the, the same thing. Then we've got the Drivers' Championship graphics, basically the same principle, except no fastest lap, really. Uh, obviously in gold for the champion. I realised I've only, I didn't put gold in for the uh, arrow over here, so that's my error. Uh, here's, a sec here's the second slide as well. And then there's the third slide for uh, Nicholas Zorbach. Uh... And then uh, that's the results. We also have a Constructors' Championship graphic. As you can see, basically the same principle as the Drivers' Championship uh, graphics, except uh, things have been altered a little bit to suit the teams, uh, such as the logos over here. Again, I've kind of missed out on the little uh, gold thing here, but uh, oh well, gold for Mercedes, because of course they won the Constructors in Brazil. And uh, that's all the graphics I have that's important. I obviously have the schedule graphics as well, but that's basically, as I mentioned, the same principle as the thumbnail because it's basically using the uh, the same template, basically. Now we get on to the main bit, the main core of it. This is Premiere Pro. This is where all the highlights get edited. Uh, I use Premiere Pro. I know that there are a lot of YouTubers out there or people that make YouTube videos that use uh, Windows Live Movie Maker, which is obviously a cheap uh, kind of a beginner's uh, tool, really. And you also have people who also go with Sony Vegas, which is also an advanced one, one of the best softwares out there. I personally like to use Premiere Pro, which is also, in my opinion, uh, one of the uh, best video editors out there. And I would argue probably better than Sony Vegas. That's my opinion. I personally prefer this one over Sony Vegas. Uh, I think you can do a lot of things with this. Then again, you can do a lot of things with Sony Vegas, but I prefer Adobe because it's more at home, really, for me. Uh, because I basically learned this uh, this software when I was at college, really. Well, briefly, but I learned most of the basics for it, really. And then basically advanced my skills from there, really, from this software. So, obviously, as you can see at the moment, this is the 2006 Brazilian GP that's in the background at the moment. Uh, I'm currently waiting for Mikos' uh, commentary at the moment. Because, uh, for anybody wondering, Mikos is doing the commentary for the 2006 finale. And George is doing the commentary for the 2013 Japanese highlights, which come out tomorrow, actually, when you're seeing this. So, uh, be on the lookout for that. But uh, yeah, so we've got the video running here with a few things going on as well. Uh, we also have a few chops in here as well in case we want to cut a few things out of the full uh, race. We also have the GP4 Forever logo over here as well. Then we have the replay over here. We've got a uh, transition over here as well, which when we go into effect controls is how it's done. So we've got a pinpoint here and a pinpoint here, which basically ensures that that slides across. We also have a sound effect over here, which is just a downloaded sound effect from YouTube. Um, and then uh, we obviously have a replay graphic over here to signify that it is a replay, even though half the time Grand Prix 4 does it for us, but I prefer to be uh, uh, to be consistent with what I do with me editing. Uh, it's the same with the outro graphic as well. Now, there are a few things like the intro that I had for 2017 and the outro graphic. They're all done on separate files, uh, basically, so different uh, Premiere Pro files. Um, because uh, I basically, what I do is I do the intro on one file, I then export it and then just transfer it onto this uh, highlights, um, this highlights work area and then uh, edit the highlights from there. And then the outro, that's also in a different uh, file as well. I just bring that over because for for consistency, I want the transitions to the, uh, the outro graphic to be the same really for every video for whenever it has an outro graphic mainly for highlights, etc., and even these videos that are coming out this week. Um, I want it to be consistent, so that's why I have it in a separate file to ensure the transition is the same, basically. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's that. That's uh, Premiere Pro. We've also got a number of things here as well. We've obviously got the volume ones as well, where we can adjust the uh, the volume on a load of things. And uh, trying to figure out where this uh, what this uh, number two one is, really, this uh, number six. Uh, I'm going to presume it's got uh, something to do with the transition. I'm going to presume. That's my guess, at least, anyway. Um, yeah, so uh, that's that, really. Uh, in fact, it's uh, it's just a bit of a glitch, really. It just uh, wasn't catching up. I do apologise for that. At least there's a lot of things that go on. Uh, some things that you don't know, of course. Over here is where all the uh, videos that we want to put into the uh, editor uh, can be stored for a while. And then we can just drag and drop whenever we want, basically. And, uh, yeah, over here is where we can have a load of effects. Now, we I normally use the wipe or the uh, cube spin or even the 
uh, the standard fade out uh, transition basically. So here's wipe, there's cube spin, and then the traditional one. Uh, for example, I'll give just give you an example. We can, I can just press that, and it just gives me to the uh, default transition, which is obviously the fade transition. So uh, that's that really, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have really for uh, uh, Premiere Pro release. Really. Not really much that much stuff. We can do a lot of things with uh, audio edits over here, but I tend not to touch that really. Effects we can do a lot more in here. We can also edit the color as well. Uh, which uh, I'll happily show you over here. This is where we can edit the color. I sometimes do that for whenever we do the end of season uh, review. Uh, well, end of season review, end of season craft, uh, credits. So that's where I use the color mainly for some parts of the end of season credits. Uh, you saw that quite a bit actually for the 2017 ones, especially for um, the late Nicholas Pascali, who we all dearly miss. Um, so, yeah, that's that really. That's pretty much all the things I have really. I hope you. You've got a bit of an insight into how things are done. Um, in fact, I'll show you one more thing. We can also hide certain layers as well. So if you want to work on one particular aspect of, a, of the video editing, we can do that and then just press it back when we're finished with that. I sometimes tend to do that anyway, uh, but not all the time. But uh, yeah, that's all I have for, for behind the scenes. So I hope you've got uh, a bit of an insight into how things are done around here. And, uh, yeah, I've been JWF1. Uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the content that's coming later on in the week. Obviously, tomorrow you've got the 2013 Japanese GP highlights. On Friday, you've got the top 10 favourite top class races, which is voted by you, of course. Which, again, that uh, that vote closes later on tonight at 11.59pm BST, so be quick. And uh, we also, on Saturday, have the highlights for what this is on, the, on Premiere Pro, the 2006 Brazilian... Uh, Grand Prix highlights and then on Sunday we have a story of GP4C basically just uh, a story of basically how it's got to this point really how big it's got from the beginning to the to the present day really so um, be on the lookout for that and that will obviously round off the anniversary week that uh, that story of GP4C but I hope you guys have enjoyed it so please give it a like comment below um, I'm sure Flo and Yuri can give some insight uh, if they uh, want to share some stuff they do as well uh, behind the scenes to ensure that their streams work etc etc and uh, yeah uh, subscribe if you haven't done already hit the notification bell uh, to ensure you get notified of any content that comes from this channel but until then I have been JWF1 enjoy the rest of the anniversary week and I will see you guys very very soon goodbye <laughs>